All right, welcome back. We've got a guest in the studio tonight. I'll let Anthony introduce himself. How you guys doing? This is Anthony Young. Um, have the channel The Unbottled on YouTube and all other platforms. We will definitely link that in the description below, but Anthony has come in tonight, and what we're going to do is kind of talk about one of these barrels that he's just picked up. We're looking at this King's Distillery bottle. We'll move that out of the way for us. <laughs> but uh, tonight, so this is a one liter kit, right? I think so, yeah. So yeah. what we ended up doing with this one, this is a unique one. We actually went ahead and started aging this for you. And what we did was, is we took a French toasted oak wood chip and vanilla beans. Okay. And we actually extracted that with Everclear. And what we did was we created a juice, per se, right? Yeah. That has a high concentrate of the vanilla bean and the wood chips. And we put it inside of this barrel and we rotated it for about a month, right? All right. And so we still got a little bit left in there. And you got to take a smell of that earlier. What did you think about it? It was, it was nice. Um, <laughs> definitely not what I expected. Right. Uh, I'm excited to have my own barrel now so I can have my, my own journey. And thank you for giving me a little bit of a head start. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but as far as the smell goes, I mean, just like you said, I mean, you can get the vanilla. You can get pretty much the full process because it's such a small surface area. You get the full impact. Right, exactly. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Another sniff. <laughs> so in the kit, you've got your wood chips. You've got your instructions. You've got everything to get started down this road. Yeah and to get this taken care of to where you can do your own journey, right? Like, do you have any idea right now what spirit you want to throw in there? I don't. I so your, don't. your pack also, I threw amber on and wood chips in there. You did, yes. So that way you can start off with this, just doing toasted vanilla, right? Okay. Kind of like what we originally had done. Um, you can give that a go, figure out if you like that. And if you want to add a different twist to it, you want to add a different flavor, you can get the amber on and wood chips. Yeah. Okay. So... With that being said, you see that we've got some glasses in front of us. We've got some different things. What we've done is the Eagle Rare is actually our honey finish that we pulled out of one of our one liter barrels. Okay. Do you want to give that a go? You want to oh, give that a try? Absolutely. So next to that is one of Red Hot Liquor store picks of honey amber on and finished Bridal and Bit. Bridal and Bit. So. I remember when they released that. The Bridal and Brit. Yep. So they had last year they released just an Amberana finished one. And I put the top on. Oh, you're good, you're good. Uh but this year they came back with the honey and amberana finish. Okay. And this is one you've already touched. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I just that was fresh crack Friday. All right. That was, All right. <laughs> that we had to get into pretty quickly. <laughs> that for me is probably one of the best finishes that I've had. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in a while. Yeah, I mean, from our conversations, Josh, uh, what I'm really excited about is being able to take a bottle that I already like, or yes. even a bottle that I don't necessarily like as much, and being able to put my personal spin on it to try to create something that only I can have. Exactly. You know. So with that being said, the Eagle Rare, right? Okay. Eagle Rares are pretty... Pretty good bottle, you know, it's still an allocated bottle, but for, in our market, about 50 to $80, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's actually, probably gonna get a lot of hate for this, but Eagle Rare <laughs> is not one of my favorite bottles. I, I don't like Eagle Rare. Okay. A, as a plain Jane sipper, I'm not getting into Eagle Rare until after about one or two drinks when my palate's <laughs> been, you know, yeah. it's been changed. It. I get the, I get the dark licorice. I get the, the like the black licorice yeah. flavor from it. So this was an experiment for me. Everyone loves Eagle Rare. Yeah. So can I turn it into something different that I would enjoy? Yeah. Tell me what you think. I mean, off the nose, it's not the normal Eagle Rare. It's, it's definitely a, a lot sweeter <laughs> than, oh, yeah. than you normally get from Eagle Rare. And it's funny because I just had my video with, with blinds of Eagle Rare, the three different types of Eagle Rare. Exactly. So now this is the fourth one. <laughs> So um, I've had a lot of experience with Eagle Rare as of recent. Right. Oh man, you cut through all, it's like butter. Super smooth, you get that honey aftertaste. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit sweeter than you normally expect and it's still probably 90 proof, nothing to prove doesn't change. 
So the proof could change okay. if we kept it in there for a while. Gotcha. When we start dealing with evaporation and some of the different stuff like that. Yeah. But that's where we start talking about aging and the seat running through seasons, right? Yeah. With what we're doing, we're doing finishing. We're not after after that, right? Yeah. So it's safe to say that the proof still is going to be 90. Yeah. But that the it, it changes the viscosity of it, the the palate, the mm. flavor. Oh, it yeah. totally changes it. Oh yeah. And I mean that after that after burn you get with a lot of Eagle Rare. Yep. If you're somebody who I know my wife would love that because she <laughs> with bourbon, that's my thing. She gin, that's hers. She, yeah. Something that can be easily mixable with anything. That's gin for her. And this right here will kind of fit probably her palate as well as mine because it's something that's not that doesn't have that harshness that most bourbons have. Right, exactly. That kind of turned her off from bourbon in the first place. Yeah, like the Jacob's Pardon you tried earlier. Oh, dude, that was. Uh, <laughs> ooh, I'm still recovering. So we've been trying a, a few bourbons off camera before we started this. You know, I'm trying to get our palates acclimated. So, <laughs> I think I picked the uh, the hottest one here. <laughs> Actually, we have an Obtanium that's about 155 proof. All right. So, you know, I mean, if, if you're being a gambler a little later tonight, you can give it a go. But so let's move on into okay. the bridle and bit. All right, let's do it. So what's the process for this? I smell the honey off the nose. So the way Rupin explained it to me was they took this into a into two different barrels. So they had okay. an Amberana barrel and then they had the honey barrel, right? Mm -hmm. So I think he told me this one was about six weeks in the honey. Okay. Again, we, we got to think that we're talking a 53-gallon barrel of honey, exactly. or a 53-gallon barrel of juice yeah. in a honey barrel, right? Yeah. So six weeks for him in that is... It's not going to give you as much no, exposure. No, it, it definitely not. Because of the surface area we talked about earlier. Exactly. But it does give you that smell. I can get the smell um, off first taste. I got the honey aftertaste. Um, still has a little bit of that kick. Have you have you jumped into any Amberana finishes before? I have not. I've heard so, that name a lot recently. <laughs> so the the complexity of this for me is how the honey attacks the Amberana in this. Amberana is usually a lot spicier, a lot more front forward. Yeah. What the honey has done here is it's tamed that to where you just get that nice... I describe it as like a confectionate sugar, like a bakery pastry kind of flavor, right? I can see that, yeah. You, 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 it's very good, but it mellows it out for me. Yeah. So, no, we'll, we'll definitely have to get you to try another uh, Amberana finish at some point. Oh, for sure. I've, that's the name I've heard a lot as far as new releases coming out. Everybody's using that Amberana. Right, right. And that's kind of what drove us into getting into these barrels, doing some different stuff. You know, Amberana finishes, that bottle right there was a hundred bucks. You know, yeah. somebody coming directly into the game, like, yeah. do, do, do you want to spend a hundred dollars? You know, like yeah. I'm looking inside my liquor cabinet behind <laughs> us at that barrel bourbon. Yeah. That was $90 for their Amberana finish. You know, you yep. 90 to 110. I've got an RD1 that was $79. Yep, 79. Yeah. I mean, you're you, to get into the Amberana game, you're looking at 80 bucks. Like to get into it, for something you might not even like. Exactly. Yes. That's so correct. when we start playing with this, we're talking about, hey, throw a bourbon in there that you like. You have your toasted vanilla. Yeah. You get to try that. And then we can kind of experiment with the Amberana. Let's see. Do we want to use I, the Amberana? Do I want like, more? Do I? Yeah. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And right. You're not as financially committed. Correct. Yeah. You know, we talked about it earlier, you know, King's Distillery bottle we got from Hicks and Liquor tonight. I mean, this thing can be $35. Yeah. $35 inside of there, and I get to manipulate it, try different things, figure out if I like the toasted vanilla. I could do just an Amberana finish, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you could do, there, there's a multitude of things you can do, and you're getting off at a much cheaper price, and you can compare this to the finished version. Yep. We don't have to put the whole bottle in there, right? We yeah, can throw exactly. half the bottle, set the other half to the side, and experiment with it and see what we like. If we like that juice better, there you there go. You go. <laughs> I mean, and another thing with with the size of it, like you you can do a lot of experiments, make a Frankenstein, so to speak. Yes, exactly. You can create your own mini infinity barrel. Yes, it's like yeah, just 
So you can do this. This can be multi-purpose. So this is one of the things I like to tell everyone is yeah. this is a great present. Yeah. It's a horrible hobby <laughs> because it's highly addictive, <laughs> right? Man. Like after your first one liter barrel, yeah. you're like, well, I could do this, right? Oh uh, yeah. I mean, so it takes two to three weeks on average to really get some good flavor out of it, right? Yeah. So now while I've got this one doing this over here, mm -hmm. I can grab another one and then I can do this over do here and over there. we just keep going. We next keep you, next you, know, you have a whole kitchen of barrels, <laughs> a whole kitchen of barrels. So it's pretty fun. Um, you'll definitely have to update us on your channel and let us know what you do with it oh, absolutely. and how you like it. Absolutely. I, um, of course, I'll be communicating with you closely because, oh, yeah. um, you know, I am, have a lot of ideas and creativity, um, just bringing them and trying to get them into an actual product. So I just want to make sure I'm not messing it up. Oh yeah. You know. So the fun thing about this, when we talk about messing it up, right? You can mess it up. Yeah. But there's this great thing to where we can take it back. We can save it. Oh, we can throw really? more Amberano wood chips okay, in there. There we go. Yeah. We can throw more French toasted oak chips in there. We can change what we do and we can take back the flavor control over what we did. Yeah. So far, I've had success at doing that. <laughs> I don't know. We we could we could hit he's the, the bur point. He's, he's the bourbon surgeon. <laughs> there you there go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I mean, it, it's very unique. It's very cool. One thing when we um, first talked about um, this concept in your business mm -hmm. was um, different climates. Same yeah. with distilleries. Where you store the barrel has an impact. Whether it's in the attic, outside, in your you know spare room, whatever. Um, I guess, what would what advice would you give me as a first timer with putting my barrel? All right, so Chris, I'm going to throw you under the bus. Uh, <laughs> this conversation I had with one of my friends, Chris, out of Mississippi. Okay. Um, Chris does this as a hobby quite a bit. Uh, before we started Barrel Chronicles, I knew Chris. I talked to him a little bit about it. Yeah. Do not, do not, do not. Put these barrels in your attic. Okay. <laughs> so Chris decided to throw a barrel in his attic. Okay. So we talk about temperature swings. We talk about humidity, temperature, all that plays a role, right? Yeah. So Chris figured out that he had a thermometer in his attic and he had a 40 degree temperature swing compared to oh, wow. outside, right? Yeah. So what he did is he would put the barrel up in his attic. Okay. And it would drop 20 degrees at night. It would jump back up 20 degrees. It was mm -hmm. 40 degrees hotter in his attic yeah. than it was outside, right? Yeah. Well, what Chris didn't take into account was evaporation. <laughs> when we start getting into that 120 degrees, yeah. you start pressurizing this vessel and you start having a lot more evaporation, right? Okay. Yeah. Naturally, it's fine. If you have, if, if it's summertime here in Georgia, Tennessee, you get that 120 degree weather, the outside relative humidity is going to protect your barrel. It's going to allow it to not allow as much evaporation, right? Angel share. Yeah, angel share. So, what I would suggest is trying to keep it below 120 degrees, okay? Okay. So, I, I do want you to keep it out from the cold, right? Yeah. Like, Right now, what we have is cold weather. We have 30 degree, 20 degree weather. We get into that freezing time. Yeah. What happens is that barrel starts to shrink. Okay. So the relative humidity outside is less than what it is normally. Yeah. And what that does is that draws that whiskey, the bourbon, whatever spirit you have in there into the staves. But what happens is it shrinks that barrel and it actually allows for evaporation. Mm -hmm. It allows for leaking, I right? See, I see, yeah. Yeah, so... Where what we see here is right here when we first filled this up, we had to seal this. We had to expand it, right? Yeah. In the instructions that we give you, we tell you to use boiling hot water. And what that does is it does rapid, uh, rapid heating okay. to where we seal a lot quicker. Yeah. This was a bit more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> because we poured liquor straight into it and, and that liquor poured out. out. Yeah. I mean, it, it it has to soak it up in order to get it to seal. Yeah. So your barrel's actually seasoned very well, right? I'm excited. As opposed to <laughs> that hot water, you know, yeah. expanding it and allowing you to be watertight. Got you me, can hear. I got me a cast iron uh, barrel, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear, I mean, it's oh, still yeah. holding liquid. I mean, and just to show you guys what we're talking about, I mean, you can kind of see it in the front, but yep. on the back, you can see where it kind of seeped out a little bit before it sealed up. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I'm definitely excited. I mean, 
and when when you kind of brought this opportunity to me, or when you posted it, I was like, I gotta grab it. <laughs> like, absolutely, come on, man. Josh, me and Josh <laughs> have been talking before. You know, he even like did. I saw him buy the Everclear, so I'm like, I gotta be the one to buy it. And he caught me at <laughs> Hamilton Liquor, and he goes, "What are you doing with that handle of Everclear?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's an so, experiment. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> see it through. I'm too, I'm too invested not to see it through. Um, so, so, your glasses are empty. Yes. What I'd like you to try is Rupin's barrel pick of the short barrel bees knees. Okay. So this was one of their actual picks. Uh, I'm a little buzzed is what the, uh, the sticker reads on it, right? The tater <laughs> sticker. And it's age 5.1 years. 5.1, okay. And seven months. Mm, I'm not too sure. I think I'm reading that right, but it says 5.1 years, seven months finish. Yeah. Uh, barrel number, Tennessee toast number five. Okay. Double Double clarify for me on that one. But um, I'm pretty sure that's what it says yep, right age there. Age five point one years, seven month finish. So it was finished in seven for seven months. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, seven. That makes finish. sense. Yeah. So, so I guess the, um, oh, we'll set that to the side. Appreciate the wax <laughs> job, Ruben. <laughs> All right. So funny enough, I just tried Bee's Knees for the first time yesterday. Really? Hamilton Liquor had a, a, a yes. tasting yes. of Bee's Knees 3, and the rep told me a little bit about Bee's Knees this particular release. Well, not right. Rubens, but... Share it with us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is this is one out of the Chattanooga market that everybody else has, right? Exactly. It's probably the one you tried yesterday. So, this is their third time releasing it. They release it every November. Um, okay. This is the third year they released it, and basically it is a once-in-a-year release that they do where they source local honey from that state yeah um i think this is the i think tennessee is the fourth or fifth state they've done it in okay, okay. i don't remember exactly because like i said the rep told me but um they took it a step further and they're sourcing local honey from that particular state so georgia has its own they're based out of atlanta so georgia has their this georgia source honey for georgia so funny story yeah. did he tell you about the honey what about it so the honey that they do right uh -huh. it goes back to the honey uh, to, the to the beekeeper, I right? I didn't know that. So the beekeeper actually takes it back and they package the honey oh. as barrel, bur uh, that barrel is, bourbon that honey, right? That is cool, yeah. So again, this is the third year, right? Yeah, third year. So the third year is the first year that they've sold the honey online. It has sold out every single year. Yeah. They have not been able to sell it. Yeah. It gets gone that quick. So that local honey turns around and it's out the door. <laughs> and, it, and it helps, it helps the, the beekeepers. Yeah, it helps the local beekeepers. It, double whammy for them. Yep, small business. I mean, Absolutely. it's very nice. If, well, we, if we could have grabbed a, a bottle of that, man, we could have like doubled up. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would love to. <laughs> we'll could, have to see if they still have it. We any. can make you a bees and these four. Right. <laughs> so what do you think about that? So this is Rupin's compared yep. to... Compare, and, and we've got the regular right here if you want to give it a go. Rupin's has got a, a white cap compared to the, uh, the, the standard. You know, Rupin has to be different, man. Yeah. Rupin, Rupin's a cool guy. Rupin's a really Cheers cool guy. Cheers to you, Rupin. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's nice. That's really nice. So I noticed that... It's a little bit stronger than the, the, than the standard. Well, it has a more of a stronger taste. So it's 114 compared to the 115. Really? Yeah, but it tastes stronger. So uh, I don't know why, but I, I honestly think that it might taste like it's got more of a bite, but I almost feel like it's a little smoother comparably to this one. Yeah. I, I definitely think that, you know, no offense, Rupin, but I was told, you know, like, oh, you got to try ours compared to the other one. I'm yeah. like, could it be that much different? Uh-huh. I think he's right. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit different. I mean, because the one I had, le the one I had yesterday, the one, I did have the one yesterday, and... The one yesterday, it was honey. This is my first time trying it, so I didn't know what right. to expect. It was oh, yeah. a, it was a pure blind, um, and I obviously should probably should have been recording so people could have <laughs> actually seen that. Um, but with Rupin's, I can get a lot more of the flavor. Right, you get a little bit of a bite, so it feels like it's a, strong, a higher proof. Right, but it's less proof and it has a smooth aftertaste. It's really smooth on the on the back end. Whereas the um, the stock or the the easily and more readily available market, the Tennessee release, the Tennessee release, better way to say that, uh, the Tennessee release, um, I mean it's it's smooth, but it doesn't it doesn't taste 
you don't you don't have a bite to it. Right. So it's it's really kind of underwhelming in a sense. Yes. Underwhelming in a sense. And and, and just to preface this, this guy likes high proof stuff. I do like high proof. So. I do like high proof. So <laughs> I do too. I every, do too. So <laughs> disclaimer, put the subtitle yes. disclaimer. Your palate may be different. <laughs> yes. But we do chase that that bite. I, I like the bite. A, a quality bourbon for me mm-hmm. has a little bit of a bite to it. Absolutely. I mean I want what I'm paying for. Exactly. <laughs> like I say with beer. If I want if I'm gonna get the calories, I want them to, to matter. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I want the calories to count. <laughs> That's a good pick, Ruben. Good job. That is a good pick. It is. It is probably. Again, I. I honestly didn't think there'd be a difference. No. Uh, I didn't think there'd be a noticeable enough difference. And I came into the store. Ruben cracked one open. Yeah. Let me try it, and I was just like, I had had this one the day before, and I was just exactly. like, the same thing. Yeah. Do what? Same exact. Same exact let, situation. Let me go ahead and get that. Yeah. <laughs> and I bought it. Same exact know? situation. So, so the one that the one that I saw um, price wise was around one hundred four. So the, my question came from I saw the short barrel regular mm-hmm. and I saw the bee's knees. I'm like sixty dollar difference from what I saw. Yep. I'm like, why is that? Because that's when the rep told me that it's a once a year release, this third year doing it. So that story made more sense. And it sits there a lot more time on the shelf inside of that barrel. Yeah, all that honey exactly. they got to acquire. Local honey. Yep. I mean, and that's the thing about bourbon. It's not so much the product that sells it. It's the story. Once you have a good story behind your product and you have a good product, it's just, that's a double whammy. I mean, because if you think about all the bottles that people buy that, you know, may not be the best bourbon, but the story sells it for itself. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, you know, that's kind of uh, the, the point of our catchphrase, mm-hmm. a finished spirit story, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you write your own story. You get to do your own thing. And you get something special out of this. Exactly. Something that you can recreate as well, right? Mm-hmm. Take copious amounts of notes, right? <laughs> make sure you take notes. Make sure you... The journal, man. Yes. Is, you, my you journal, is my journal in there? Not yet. I mean, we can make you one if you need one. <laughs> I need a journal, man. I need to... I'm be back, back to my science days, man. <laughs> there put, you go. Put the white coat on. <laughs> well, man, I appreciate you coming out today. I definitely... Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see where you're going to go with this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll stay tuned for sure. Oh, absolutely, man. I might just you know put some put some uh, you know Blantons in there. Hey, let's do it. Let's do <laughs> it. Again, hey, we've got Anthony's channel linked down below. Um, we will definitely get involved with him a bit more and see where we go with this. And if you guys haven't already, check out his channel. Like, comment, share, subscribe in this video. Jump over there and subscribe to his. We appreciate you guys, and we hope you have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.